Joining me now to talk about the proposed peace deal is Kurt Volker. He's a former U.S. ambassador to NATO and is currently the executive director at the McCain Institute for International Leadership at Arizona State University. Welcome back to the show. Thanks. First, I want to get your reaction to this peace plan and Russia's move to revoke Putin's call for military help. Well, I think what Putin is trying to do is make sure that he is positioned in a way so as not to be seen as the aggressor himself or that Russia is itself the aggressor. He wants to, to look like there's an indigenous insurgency inside Ukraine and that you know, Putin is just a bystander. Of course, that's nonsense. Uh, Russia is actively supporting the insurgency, allowing troops, allowing uh, weapons to cross the border and fight in Ukraine. That Ukrainian helicopter wasn't downed by just anybody. It was downed with a Russian weapon. So Putin is trying to back off a little bit on the appearances on the expectation that if Poroshenko and Ukrainian forces try to clamp down, then he'll say, well, I have no choice. I just have to respond again to this. So saying one thing, doing another. Um, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry mentioned that more sanctions could be on the table. This is something that's been talked about for a right. long time now. So what would that look like at this point? Well, there is something that people refer to as phase three sanctions, which is to take a broader swath of sanctions against state-owned enterprises and whole sectors of the Russian economy, particularly the energy sector. It is something that European governments have been very reluctant to do, and frankly, the United States has been reluctant to do, or at least do alone. Uh, so we've been trying to work with the Europeans to build up a list of additional sanctions. But unfortunately, what we keep hearing is that if Russia persists, then we'll do new sanctions. Or if Russia takes some new step, then we'll do new sanctions. And the reality is that Russia has persisted, and Russia has done these additional things, and those sanctions haven't come into play. And I think it's actually having the opposite effect now, as Putin is feeling th these things are never going to materialize. I have a lot of open running room here to do this kind of invasion by subterfuge through intelligence services and, and through special forces. Is that one of the reasons, perhaps, that he's uh, appearing that he's going to pull back uh, for threat of sanctions? I don't think so. Uh, I think he's, he's interested in positioning himself that he has deniability and to make it very difficult for people to agree on sanctions, and at the same time, taking the steps to allow special operations forces, allow intelligence services to go into Ukraine and foment this kind of unrest, he can have deniability and then still be disrupting Ukraine at the same time. Let's touch on this ceasefire that uh, supposedly was put in place uh, last week, and now we're a few days in. There's still a lot of violence. Do you think at least uh, things are starting to progress toward peace, or, or is this situation not any better off than it was months ago? It's really not any better off, in my view. Um, what you have is the Ukrainian government is, is trying very hard to figure out the right strategy. How do you control your own territory as a country, as a sovereign country, and avoid violent incidents while there are well-armed violent insurgents in that country now. And so they're trying to figure out how to do that. They've offered a ceasefire and the opportunity for these insurgents to lay down arms and even to depart uh, Ukraine. The insurgents, however, have doubled down and said, no, nope, we're here to fight, we're here to stand our ground, and they're getting support from Russia surreptitiously to do that. I think that what we see is you're going to have at a certain point the Ukrainian government feeling like it needs to move in further militarily, and that's the kind of signal that the Russians are waiting for. You know, they've just increased the numbers on the Ukrainian border again after having decreased them for a while. I think they're sitting there waiting to see if there's a major Ukrainian military move, they'll be in position to respond. All right, Ambassador Volker, we always appreciate your time and insight. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.